There's a lot of talk these days about the EV taking over the world and that gasoline cars are on the way out. But where does that put diesel engine cars? Did you know that the modern diesel engine vehicle has better fuel efficiency, power and torque, therefore towing capacity, and now nearly zero emissions compared to the gasoline engine car. But today I'll tell you why diesel is dead and why you should never buy a diesel car. On August 22, 2006, a new world record was broken. A speed of 350.092 miles per hour, Andy Green broke the diesel land speed record in the Bonneville Salt Flats in Nevada. But this was no fluke record, it was years in the making. Let's rewind back to May 1997. 34-year-old British fighter pilot Andy Green was on vacation, and he decided to spend that time with a bunch of engineers in Al Jafir, Jordan. The plan? To pilot an 11-ton powered jet car called Thrust. SSC and iron out a few problems before shipping it off to the US for a world record attempt. Andy's plan was to bully the car into being stable by making constant tiny adjustments to maintain stability. And on the last day of the team's testing, Andy was able to take thrust SSC up to 490 miles per hour. But he wasn't done there. In June 1994, Andy responded to a headline in the paper that read, Wanted, High Speed Driver to Break the Sound Barrier. Andy had always been fascinated by the land speed record since he was a kid. So, he jumped at the opportunity to break it, and so off he went to join the team to shoot for the land speed milestone, the sound barrier. After all, he'd experienced flying supersonic fighters and doing a 364 foot bungee jump just because. So he was a strong candidate for the position which was advertised for only those who weren't of a nervous disposition. On the morning of October 15, 1997, Andy Green climbed into the cockpit of Thrust SSC. He smashed the record with a new land speed record of 760 0.035 miles per hour. Not only that, but he also set the first supersonic land speed record. And then Andy went back to his day job. But then came 2005. Chairman of the British construction equipment builder JCB approached Andy with a proposition. They had a new diesel engine that could produce 750 horsepower with just the right modifications, and they wanted to break the diesel engine land speed record. At the time, the record was 253 miles per hour. Andy accepted the challenge, and on October 22, 2006, he broke the record with a speed of 350.092 miles per hour. Believe it or not, Andy never even got the car into top gear. With the right tires, he estimated the car could easily reach 450 miles per hour. But before we get into why diesel engine is dead. Let's look at the engine. Lightning fast speed isn't the only thing diesel engines are good for. There are actually tons of advantages to the diesel engine. First of all, diesel engines are highly efficient. They have a compression ignition system which is way more efficient than what you'd find on an average gasoline powered car. Diesel engines don't use spark plugs to create heat for the process. That's an extra bonus in itself because no spark plugs or distributors also means no ignition tune-ups for diesel engines. Because the engine needs to get the air at the correct temperature, it needs more compression. So if it compresses the air inside until it's hot enough to spontaneously ignite the fuel when it's sprayed into the chamber. A higher compression level means a hotter engine than in a standard gas car. All this means that with a diesel engine you'll get more energy while using less fuel to create it. This also means better gas mileage than gasoline powered cars. And with prices on the way to 10 bucks a gallon, you can see why it's such an advantage to be able to travel further without the need to fill up as often. In fact, diesel contains up to 15 percent more energy than gasoline. That means that diesel powered vehicles can travel up to 35% farther on a gallon of fuel than gasoline powered ones. Now if you're planning on hauling around your trailer at the back of your vehicle this summer, here's another reason why diesel is the way to go. Diesel engines offer a higher level of torque, which means you get a significantly higher towing capacity for heavy loads. The diesel engine has been described as the workhorse of the power industry, and for good reason. Walk into any construction site and chances are you'll find yourself surrounded by diesel powered vehicles. In the construction sector, a massive 98% of all energy use comes from diesel, and construction is responsible for 55% of off-road fuel use here in the U.S. Back in 2010, a new ultra-low sulfur diesel fuel was introduced in the U.S. that made use of advanced engine combustion strategies and emissions control technology. Think of things like selective catalytic reduction systems and particulate filters. And so, manufacturers started producing engines and equipment with lower and lower emissions technology. This led to what's known today as the fourth generation 
generation or tier 4 advanced diesel technology. This technology delivers a whopping 90% reduction in nitrogen oxide emissions and 90% decrease in particulate metal. This applies to all sorts of construction related vehicles and equipment like excavators, bulldozers, wheel loaders, and backhoes. And not only do construction sites use diesel engines because of the high increase of productivity, but this new tier 4 technology makes it possible to have nearly zero emissions too. The construction industry is under constant demand to go greener. So, low emission diesel engines are a good way to go for the future of the industry as a whole. Diesel is also a popular option for train engines. Today some of the most powerful long distance freight train engines can go up to 4500 horsepower, and powerful diesel engines enable these trains to accelerate quickly and run at higher speeds with very little track damage. Diesel engines are a great solution for efficiently transporting literally tons of freighter passengers. For example, train manufacturer CSX estimated that their fleet moves one ton of cargo an average of 492 miles per gallon of fuel. So let's say your car weighs 3 tons. Imagine being able to travel nearly 164 miles a gallon. Of course, that's subjective estimates, but just think about it for a moment. There's even a hybrid option for these train engines also. In fact, diesel electric systems are 5 times more efficient than the almost most ancient steam engine locomotives. Even power stations get their energy from diesel. Diesel generators are widely used at most coal, oil, and gas fired power plants. And in large power plants, there's usually one emergency diesel generator set per unit. These generators automatically start when an under voltage relay is activated. That could be for a variety of reasons, like a failed station service transfer, if a generating unit is tripped offline. And this scenario isn't uncommon in coal fired power plants either. Did you know that you may owe your life to diesel? It's all thanks to diesel emergency backup generators. Even losing power for a short period of time can create situations that threaten public health and safety. Diesel generators are the perfect choice for emergency and backup power systems. They provide immediately full strength electric power if a primary power supply system fails. And they do it in less than 10 seconds. For the same size engine, a diesel generator can produce twice the kilowatts of a gasoline engine generator. They also provide a steady supply of power, and they have no issue with wide swings in power use. A diesel generator never flickers or dips in power output when large appliances turn on. But turbine and gas engines could slow down when strained, and that would cause the electrical equipment to fail completely. So diesel is a much better and safer option for these generators. Cross the ocean and you'll be surrounded with diesel engine powered cars in Europe. From Germany to Turkey. If diesel is so great, why don't we see more diesel engine cars in America? Here's the thing, we prefer gasoline powered cars. Part of it is because when we hear the word diesel, many people think of a loud, polluting, noisy truck. You could probably even smell it, and you don't even think of the possibility of zero emissions. But the truth is, the modern diesel engine isn't so loud, and the emissions we normally think of have now been solved. But diesel still isn't nearly as popular as gasoline in the US. Many blame the advertising industry here. In Europe, there have been campaigns devoted to moving the automobile towards diesel. The more people worry about global warming, the more Europe pushed diesel as a wonder fuel to save the planet. But when's the last time you saw a pro-diesel ad like here in the US? And ironically, enough, they're trying to get rid of diesels in Europe now and replace them with electric cars. But it's not just that. Here's why diesel will never be a big thing in the US. Diesel engines aren't perfect. Far from it. First of all, the steep price tag of a diesel. Diesel cars are much more expensive than standard gasoline engine cars. We're talking thousands of dollars more expensive. But are they worth it? Many disagree. I mean, yeah, sure, diesel engines have higher mile per gallon ratings, but they come with tons of issues and repair costs if they break down. Diesel cars might not need new spark plugs or distributors, but they still require regular maintenance. Most diesel cars have separators for the excess water in the system, and you better make sure you empty that water out periodically or else you'll be in for a world of trouble. Once you do go into the mechanic for repairs, be prepared for a hefty price tag. Diesel mechanics might end up charging you more for repairs. This is because diesel engines require their own unique parts and servicing. Also, a dealership or garage will have certified mechanics that perform this type of work. In a way, it's an endless cycle. To make diesels cheap, you need a process where you have high inventory of diesel parts and technicians. And remember, diesel needs heat. So diesel is bad news if you live in a colder state. Once temperatures drop below freezing, it becomes more difficult to start up your diesel engine. You need a higher temperature available to ignite the fuel, which means you need a block heater to keep the compartment warm while you're not driving. And if you're the type of person who travels all the time and can't access a power source for your block heater, I suggest not scheduling any early morning appointments. Because with all the time it'll take for you to warm up your engine, there's no way you'll make the appointment 
appointment on time. Also, don't forget that diesel engines are still louder than gas cars, especially when they're cold. A standard diesel engine produces 100 decibels of noise. Add that to the extra noises of accessories and equipment, and that noise can quickly become deafening. A gasoline powered engine, on the other hand, only produces about 75 decibels when driving at 65 miles an hour. Did you know that anything above 85 decibels has the potential to create hearing loss? Consumer diesel cars are on their death march. Recently, diesel is described as the one time wonder fuel that's become the new asbestos. You see, nitrogen oxides and dioxides in particulate matter are pumped out by diesel exhaust, but they are now being branded as silent killers. The European Environmental Agency found that nitrogen dioxide from diesel fumes caused about 71,000 premature deaths across Europe, and that was in just one year. The World Health Organization declared that diesel exhaust is carcinogenic, meaning it is a cause of lung cancer that's now in the same category as asbestos and mustard gas. Not only are people finding out about the scary hidden dangers surrounding diesel, but there are many diesel related controversies that have been happening in the past decade, some costing car companies billions of dollars. Diesel engine vehicles have never been the number one choice here in the US, but interestingly enough in 2020, sales of pickup trucks and SUVs with diesel engines grew 28%. Maybe something to do with the pandemic, I don't know. But we'll have to see if the trend carries on this year. But it gets worse. Diesel made the news worldwide not too long ago due to a scandal now called Dieselgate. Back in 2014, it was discovered that Volkswagen had installed emission software in more than half a million diesel cars across the US, and almost 10.5 million more worldwide. The software enabled their vehicles to sense the unique parameters of an emissions drive cycle from the Environmental Protection Agency. These defeat devices were able to detect steering, throttle, and other inputs on the test, and then switch between two different operating modes. In the test mode, the vehicle seemed perfectly well in order and completely compliant with all the federal emissions levels. But after that, when these cars went on the road, the computer would switch to a separate mode. The second secret mode would change fuel pressure, exhaust gas, recirculation, injection timing, sometimes even the amount of aqueous urea solution sprayed into the exhaust. If you're a diesel person, you know what I mean. And if you're not, just Google it. This mode also prevented heavier nitrogen oxide emissions. This pollutant has links causing lung cancer. Cancer. And this mode allowed nitrogen oxide up to 40 times higher than the federal limit. Volkswagen was subsequently sued for billions of dollars after the fact, and people are still talking about the scandal today. But now, you tell me, do you drive a diesel powered car? And do you think diesel cars are dying? Please share your opinion by commenting below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support.